we have something completely unbelievable, unfathomable regarding silver that we're going to talk about this morning. Yes, silver. You aren't going to believe what we have coming down the road, silver investors. I'll leave it at that. But first, let's recognize what's going on right now. Last I checked, we had gold prices above $2,000. Basement dwellers, we talked about this just yesterday. We talked about it last week that this could be a major critical week. Silver above, what, $24 per ounce. And I was befuddled this morning. I was like, what's causing this? What's causing this? I talked to my friend, Bald Guy Money. We were texting back and forth. I said, Bald Guy, I got to go live here in a minute. What's causing this major updraft? And he sent me some great information. This is what's causing this morning's big up move. Some of the factors, okay? And this is according to Bald Guy Money. He's another YouTuber, good friend of mine, puts out great content once a week. A lot of you know him. Really a super nice guy, very intelligent, and he was kind enough to send me a brief synopsis as to why we have this big upswing this morning in the silver price and gold price. Some of the factors, okay? We had bad retail sales data coming out this morning. We've talked about that. The economy is so... Do you think... Do you think that when trucking volumes in the United States are down 10, 15, 20% that maybe there's a little less retail sales going on? Do you think when the consumer has maxed out their credit cards, spent through all their savings, and now, according to recent data from Fidelity Investments, people are pull, 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 pulling, <laughs> I'm stuttering, polling money out of their 401ks. Do you think? Okay. Uh, other reasons for silver and gold flying this morning. Flight to safety. Bald guy points out the question, is reality setting into the market? Are traders figuring out what's headed our way? We've talked about this many times. Silver and gold are the oldest markets in the world, amongst the oldest markets. Some guy sent me a big, long, nasty email saying, the fish market, the fish market's older than gold and silver. Okay, great, whatever. But gold and silver are pretty much the oldest markets in the world. What comes with age? Wisdom, okay? Gold and silver can see further into the future than any other market. Are they seen as they look around the corner, as they look for the forest through the trees, are they seeing major economic hardship heading our way? Are they seeing the need for our old friend, Jerome Powell, Jerome, Gomer Powell, whoever, the guy that runs the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, that he's going to need to print money? Okay. All right. The, de the DXY, the dollar index is down. Of course, there's an inverse relationship between the dollar, the DXY index, which measures the dollar against a bunch of other credit currencies like the euro and the yen. But when the dollar goes down in relative value, we know it's going down in real value. But when it goes down in relative value relative to these other currencies as well, that makes the gold and silver price spike as well. Uh, thank you, bald guy, for sharing that with us. Let me just read to you what the good news you want to hear. And then we're going to talk about this unbelievable news. And it is good news. And I mean completely unbelievable. When you look at this from a big picture perspective for silver and what we have coming down the pike. But let me go back here. Bald guy also sent me this article. Ba -ba, where'd it go? Hold on here. Here we go. Just briefly, from CNBC, stocks slide as November rally pauses on some weak retail earnings. Okay, here, Lowe's uh, declined almost 2.3% 2, 2 after reducing its full year sales outlook. Best Buy dropped 4.6% 4. 4. following a, a reduced full year outlook. Let me tell you something about Best Buy. My daughters had an indoor soccer game Saturday night. We were driving back Manchester and 141, a massive retail intersection in St. Louis, okay, like where everything is. Weekends only, 
uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, every big retail box store you could imagine, and Walmart, Costco, everything. And there's a big Best Buy, super busy intersection. We're driving by, and my daughter said, Best Buy closed. They shut up a Best Buy at probably one of the most busy intersections in St. Louis. Guys, retail sales are hurting. Uh, American Eagle Clothier uh, was st stocked down 17%. So the consumer's getting weak. The economy's slowing. Jerome's going to have to print. That's why silver and gold are up. People are waking up. Not just basement dwellers, not just you and me, but everyone out there is waking up. And by the way, basement dwellers, if you want a place where you can go 24 hours a day and dwell with other silver and gold enthusiasts, go to ronsbasement.com and please register for the chat room there, okay? And use your YouTube username. So we have uh, continuity between YouTube and that chat room. We know who everybody is. Like uh, my username is Ron's Basement. Coin Shop Chris would have the username Coin Shop Chris. Annie Oakley might have the username Annie Oakley. Okay, go check it out. We got a lot of big things going on there and it's growing and growing. Let's talk about silver absolutely unbelievable okay when you look at this all in big context there's a lot of people talk, i've heard bix weir talking about this vince latchy was on rkd economics talking about this i've put it all together and i think what we have what i'm going to present to you is going to be absolutely mind-blowing for silver 100 dollars silver in the next five years look i told you i thought we could get above 2000 in gold this week that happened i'm on a roll baby let's get that hundred dollar silver let's not even say five years i think it's going to be within the next two or three years and why would i say that why 100 dollars silver all other things equal let's talk about we know and I heard Keith Newmeyer talking about this yesterday, the CEO of First Majestic Silver. Silver production has flatlined, actually has been, re been going down. The amount of silver being supplied is going down. That has nothing to do with this mind-blowing uh, presentation I'm going to give you right now. But factor that in. Mines are producing less and less silver. Okay? Demand is going crazy. All new technology, all new technology demands silver. Guys, solar, whew, next time you see a solar panel, silver lovers, I want you to go up and give it a hug. I've been doing that lately. When I'm walking around, I see my neighbors have solar panels in their front yard, and I go up and I give it a hug, and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I just, I love solar. I love the idea of green energy. What I really love is the idea of the fact that there's a lot of silver in those panels, and it is unbelievable what's coming down the pike for solar, because right now, all right, let's set the table. Point number one, right now, the demand for silver from the solar industry is going through the roof. The Silver Institute predicts 160 million ounces this year. It's likely to be 200. You know that already, basement dwellers. We covered that, okay? But solar is growing right now in this current environment. There are major, real initiatives to, to, to drastically increase the amount of solar installation throughout the world, okay? So, so right now, right? Remember the Paris Accords? We talked about this. COP21, the United Nations, a big deal, these climate agreements they had. Now we have COP28, the new Paris Accords coming out, which will be here within the next five or six weeks. I'm going to ring the bell in just one second. I'm on a roll right now. Thank you, Hermie, for the super chat. Wow, thank you, Sean, for the super chat. Man, you guys are awesome. So right now, solar going through the roof. Right now. Right now. Okay? Demand for solar through the roof. Decrease supply. Demand for solar going through the roof. New initiatives. Right? Worldwide cooperation. The Chinese agree. The whole world agrees. We are likely going to see a tripling, a tripling of green energy installations in the next six years. That'll come out of the COP28 United Nations big meeting going on in Dubai here within the next five or six weeks. Okay, that's awesome. Tripling, that alone, that alone, there's not enough silver. <laughs> there is not enough silver to, to accommodate that, especially at the current prices. But that's not 
the big deal. Okay, I need to ring the bell. Hey, we got a hundred thumbs up. Thank you, basement dwellers. A tripling, not of this year's production, of all installed solar. Tripling. You can't even start to think about the numbers on for that alone. But, but it gets even crazier when you think about, we got a new word, basement dwellers, the T word. Nobody can guess. Can somebody guess? If anybody guesses the T word, uh, you get your picture on the community tab today. The T word. We're going to talk about the T. T is in Tom next. But this is what is going to just completely blow apart the silver market as we come into the next two, three, four, five years. And I mean, $100 silver will be nothing. If you want to get your hands on some silver before the market potentially blows up, remember, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not giving financial advice. I rely on Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, online bullion dealer. Do you want the best prices? Yes, you do. Do you want the best quality? Yes, you do. Do you want a company that you can trust? Yes, you do. Do you want a company that you can call and talk and a lot of times talk to the guys that own the company? Yes, you do. If you want all that, Pimbex checks all the boxes. Go check them out. All right, do your own due diligence. I did my own due diligence, and I found Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com is best. I think you will, too. So, what's the T word? <laughs> Drama? <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Trust? Nope. Uh, hey, Susie. Okay, no, I don't see it on there, guys. The T word is Top Con. T-O-P-C-O-N. What's Top Con, you might you might be asking. Well, let's remember here, guys. Let's 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 remember something, basement dwellers. Here's get some silver warm and fuzzies for you this morning. Okay. Okay. Silver production is stagnant. There's less silver being produced every year. Okay. S demand for silver from solar right now. Right now, like as we're live right now, throughout the world, the demand for sil silver for solar is exploding. Okay, and we have new initiatives coming out that could triple. I mean, just uh, it, the, the the numbers are mind boggling. The new solar installations they're going to propose or mandate for the next three years. That alone, there's there's nothing. But it gets even crazier because Topcon, T O P C O N. That's the T word. You better remember it next time I quiz you. That stands for tunnel oxide passivated contact. Want me to repeat that for you? Tunnel oxide passivated contact solar panels, top con solar panels are a new type of solar panel technology. They are based on the principle of selective charge carriers. I have no idea what that means, but wait, <laughs> silver investors. Top con solar panels have the following characteristics. They're more efficient. <coughs> Uh, their their top con panels have a simpler manufacturing process than the current panels that we use. That's not it. Keep listening. Humidity. They're less sensitive to humidity. I hate humidity. It gets to be like a jungle here in St. Louis. And I got some other crazy information for you. And one of it has to do with St. Louis. But take a deep breath because you're about to get the big kicker. All right, you're silver, you've waited, your time has come. Topcon uh, panels, when it comes to silver, Topcon panels use at least 50% more silver per solar cell than the current panels that are being used, the PERC, P-E-R-C -E -E panels. The new generation of solar panels, and this came from uh, Microsoft AI, whatever that is, they put this together for me. All right, this is this is real information. The new panels, okay, it's already exploding right now. Okay, the number of panels is going to explode from where we are right now, and that explosion of new panels, even under the current situation where there's not enough silver. The new panels are going to require 50% more silver. You're going to look, do you think we can get, I'm going to put it in. 
Do you think we can get to $100 silver? If you do, type 100. I just did it. I'm going to do it if I ask you to do it. Type 100 in there, okay? Okay? Type 100. <clears throat> thank you, Jim. Thank you, Ricky's House of Crap. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. So, where's all this money going to come from? There's even a bigger kicker is the world is going to try to try to do this big green thing. There's not, the money's not there. The only way they're going to be able to accomplish this is with money printing. So that adds even, that's like a double bonus for silver because the monetary component of silver stays in place through all this, okay? It looks crazy. And then, I, and then I'm done last night. I thought I was done for the night. I got more for you. This is from my hometown, and this has to do exactly with what we're talking about right here. Let me have a sip of coffee. I'll be right back. Right here in St. Louis. <laughs> you think solar's taken off? Here's a here's a story. Excuse me. Amazon plans for new solar farm in Warren County. Amazon just announced plans for a new solar farm in Warren County. It would be Amazon's first solar farm in St. Louis metro area in the 4th in Missouri. An Amazon spokesman told Fox 2 News that Warren County is preparing for a 139 megawatt solar farms. Officials say solar farms not only help the communities in which they're located, but they also help power Amazon's local operations. Thank you, Sorcerer Stan. <laughs> Buy a new hot dog. We're going to have to deal with the hot dog. I'll tell you the hot dog story sometime in the future. But thank you, Sorcerer Stan. Glad you missed the old hot dog. So, guys, the solar story will be one of the biggest drivers for the silver price as we head into the next two, three years. There's no doubt about it. But it doesn't just stop there. Because wind installation, solar's the big story. Sorry, my allergies are acting up. Wind, what do you think about wind? Do the, that, that, that's expanding. That uses silver. Electric cars, we've all stopped talking about that, right? But electric cars use significantly more silver, more copper for that matter too, than the current cars that are on the road. What about high-speed high rail? Let's just touch on that. We don't talk about that ever, right? But are there reasons to be optimistic about high-speed rail? Bear with me. Here, this is from the Silver Academy. Right, Our friends over at the Silver Academy, our friend John Little, says silver shortage looms. <coughs> Excuse me. High-speed rail expansion threatens precious metal supply. Silver rush. High-speed rail sparks mining boom and highlights critical minerals importance. We don't even think about things like high-speed rail. What about the AI demand. We know they're saying that these new AI chips are going to spark a new huge... I mean, everywhere we look, there's just massive demand sources coming online for silver. The defense sector, which is a lot of that information is kept secret, right? There's tons and tons of silver used every every year in the nuclear programs, in the all these high-tech missiles and bombs, all that new high-tech equipment uses tons and tons of silver. And on top of that, we've got the situation. I'm going to repeat it one more time because, guys, this is the most exciting story We've already got exploding demand for solar right now. Give yourself a hug, okay? Right now, right? We know they're going to mandate a tripling, most likely, of the current installed status and that these new panels are going to use significantly more silver. They say up to 50%, okay? It's going to be absolutely crazy, but... I gotta, and then we know they're going to have to print money to pay for all this, which will be dilutive to the dollar, which will be supportive to the silver and gold price. Like we're seeing this morning, when the dollar goes down, the price of silver and gold go up. But what? Is there more? <laughs> Do you think there could be more? Yes, there's even more 
right? We're focused in on silver, but when we're talking about silver, we're talking about gold. But what about what about silver? What about if investors, stackers? Okay, you, we, us, the silver stacking community, not us, right? We're the diehards. But that that fringe, they've been they've been kind of betraying us lately. We have almost four hundred people on here. Thank you for being here this morning. It's a big big deal okay each and every one of you please give this a thumbs up when we get to 200 thumbs up i ring the cowbell the loud obnoxious cowbell i'll give you a three second warning don't worry because some people don't like it i understand but 409 people man we're just flying this morning but there's more okay because silver investors have been misbehaving you've been a bad boy and a bad girl and you know what there's a lot of women that are getting into silver stacking. I haven't talked about that for months. We got more and more women joining us, which is awesome, absolutely awesome, because just the fact traditionally stacking and, and silver and gold investing were a lot mostly men, and we have more and more women, and we know a lot of very nice, very smart women, and women are good at protecting their families, protecting their their futures. Uh, we welcome all the new female stackers, more and more showing up. This channel alone, right? I, when I started it, like four percent of the viewers were women. Now it's up to fifteen percent. And I asked Susie, I said it must be because of my boyish good looks, and she just laughed at me. <laughs> I haven't used that one for a while. Guys, it gets even better. Whether you're a man stacker, a woman stacker, we've been we've not been stacking as a as a whole, right? Investment demand for silver has been going down. There's been outflows, just the harsh reality of money from the silver ETFs. Yes, SLV. I know it's all unicorn fart dust and all that good stuff, but nonetheless, there's been an outflow of money from the silver ETFs. The, 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 there, there's a, um, some people say surplus of physical silver right now. People aren't going to their local coin shops and buying as much silver. Okay. Remember this. Remember this. And people say, oh, there's a big surplus. There's a big surplus. The silver market, especially on the retail investment side, is so sensitive, so delicate. It takes almost nothing to move it into a state of shortage. The same will be true on the other side, right? When people start, it, it can go to a little bit of a surplus. But think about this. Within the context of what we talked about, unbelievable demand coming from, for silver as we head into the next three to five years. Unbelievable, right? There's already a big silver deficit from the Silver Institute. We don't need for silver to be loved by everyone. We love it. You love silver. I love silver. If you love silver... I'm going to ask you to do this, and I'm going to do it myself. Type love. I'm going to type it twice. Love, love. I love silver. We don't need everybody else to love silver. All we need is for people to stop hating it so much, right? My neighbors, when I'm at my kids' soccer games and basketball games, and I say, oh, you know, I try to talk to them about silver. They hate silver, right? They don't, they don't like it. They, oh, you know, you should buy you should buy Apple stock, buy wow, whatever, right? Yeah, well, all we need is for the metal to stop being hated so much. Now, not just me saying this, Rick Rule. Do you know who Rick Rule is? Yes, the crown prince. You know what he said? He said exactly that. He said the, the big money is made when silver goes from being not hated so much or from being goes from being hated so much to being not hated so much. That's where the big move goes. And then people start to wake up and maybe people start to love silver again and it really takes off. And in this environment with all this crazy stuff going on, doesn't it make sense? And is it starting to make sense to you now? What does it mean that what the Chinese are doing with silver? Have you thought about that? We just talked about all these kind of internal components. But if we zoom in on the Chinese, what are we learning about the Chinese with silver? Yes, the second largest economy in the world. Yes, 1.4 billion people, which also matches India, but we're not going to cover India today. We're going to focus on China. What do you think this means about China? What? Right, right. Their solar industry is exploding. 
All right, that fits in with what we talked before. They're refiners. There's interviews I've watched on Chinese state TV where the refiners, the metal refiners in China are saying, we need more silver. We need more silver. And they actually were making fun of the Western markets. They were making fun of the COMEX and the LBMA. They were like, how can, how can the price of silver go up or down by 5% in one day based upon what this guy, uh, Gomer Pyle at the Federal Reserve, or Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve says? I'm sorry, I keep getting those names mixed up. Jerome Powell says at the Federal Reserve, right? What do we know about the Chinese? What about the SGE, huh? The Shanghai Gold Exchange. The physical market. It's not like the COMEX. Again, they make fun of the COMEX. They're like, it's all the COMEX, guys, <laughs> is levered 200 to 1. Electronic, right? Paper, silver, right? 200 contracts for each one ounce of real deliverable silver. The Chinese laugh at that. They're like, it's a joke. The Russians laugh at that. It's a joke, okay? They have a whole different market over there. And did you know, did you know that oftentimes the price for silver on the Chinese market is 13, 14, 10, 8, sometimes 16% higher than what we have in the United States? The Chinese are crazy about silver. And it gets even, what does this mean to you? Think about this. Recently, and I mean real recently, we're getting reports that the Chinese state media, they control all the media over there, is running commercials, right, on their regular programming, encouraging their citizens to buy silver. And apparently they even have some new products available, I don't know, 500 gram bars, five, encouraging their their, their citizens to buy silver. Hey guys, we're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. That's exciting. Okay. It's a, you know, this community is awesome and you are part of it. A lot of you are already subscribed and you know what, right now I want to say thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you're not subscribed, please consider it. Everything here is free. It's free. There's no obligation. Yes, I have sponsors, First Mining Gold, Pimbex, right? But they're companies. I own that stock. I buy silver from them. They're my, you know, they're companies that I believe in, that I work with, but I don't charge anything. Super chats are always appreciated. Not trying to encourage you to give super chats, but you know, they are very appreciated. They go a long way to help support the channel. Subscribing is free. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. And you always know you can give it a thumbs up, right? That helps. That helps get the word out to more and more people, okay? But this Chinese situation when it comes to silver is, it, we got to remember, China and India are two of the fastest growing economies in the world. I can't, it, think about the solar stuff we talked about earlier in this video, okay? And then th that alone doesn't make sense that we have $24 silver, we should have $48 silver right now. But then think about <coughs> China and India. Okay, 2.8 billion people. That's like almost 10 times as many people as is in the United States. And they are growing. They're becoming richer. Their middle classes are expanding. The exact opposite of what's going on here we talked about earlier. People can't afford to buy overpriced kitchen faucets from Lowe's in the United States anymore. Middle class people in the United States are hurting. China and India, they're expanding and they love, they're supportive of the precious metals. It's only going to get more and more interesting as we go into the coming years, guys. You know, I think if you own silver and gold right now, you are positioned very, very well. Citibank put out a new report about precious metals. They emphasized that in the West, we have outflows from the big gold, GLD, and SLV ETFs. You know what? At this point, that's a good thing. <laughs> because we've got gold uh, this morning above $2,000, silver above $24. Okay? We'll take it. It's a good thing there's outflows from the ETFs. Because when that stops, that's really going to be rocket fuel for the price of silver and gold. When it just stops, what about if money starts going into those ETFs? 
That's double rocket fuel. That's booster rocket. That's the next level, okay? In the emerging market economies are doing okay. They're the ones that are really driving the demand. City brought that up for the precious metals, in particular silver. Uh, China continues to buy, okay? But right now, the vaults are getting empty around the world. The LBMA vaults, right, are low. The COMEX vaults are low. Just as we're moving into a period of time where there's going to be... Um, uh, record demand like we've never seen for the precious metals okay um, let's 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 talk about let's talk about a little doom I want to point something out here hold on one second we haven't talked about our old friends the bankers remember when the banking crisis hits again, if it happens, if we have a banking crisis, okay, Jerome's going to freak, Jerome's going to flip like he never has, print money, people can sniff it, gold and silver can sniff it. We know that we know the the bond market has killed the banks, right? All your money you gave them, they bought bonds that are now worth 50, 60, 70 cents on the dollar. <clears throat> the other big thing is the commercial real estate crash that's going on. Is it really happening? Is it really happening? I've got a, a piece of information for you. One little piece that I think will drive home the point that it is. This is absolutely crazy. Again, this happened in my hometown, St. Louis, Missouri, you know, the Gateway Arch, right? But listen to this. Downtown St. Louis building sells for, oh, I got to do the cowbell. Susie just screamed at me. Hold on. We're going to come back to this bank crash. You got three second warning. Okay. Those of you with earbuds on, I'm going to ring this bell like you ain't never heard. That's uh, for 200 thumbs up. All right. Commercial real estate is in big trouble. Listen to this. Downtown St. Louis building sells for $7 million less than it did in 2018. $7 million less than it sold for five years ago. Well, big deal, right? Must have been a, probably a $100 million building, blah, blah, blah. Uh, listen. Says the transaction comes amid continued use of remote work and a gradual increase uh, in central business di district office vacancy. A downtown St. Louis office building sold for $7 million less than it had last traded nearly five years ago. Okay, that uh, talks about the remote work thing again. 200 North Broadway sold on September 1st for $12 million. Think about that. Okay, according to City Records, uh, the buyer, St. Louis Place Investors, is uh, blah blah blah, whatever. The seller was New York-based Franklin BSP Realty Trust, uh, which is on the New York Stock Exchange, which had purchased the the three hundred thousand square foot building in two thousand eighteen for nineteen million dollars. Think about: Are we? Is there a commercial real? What is? What, have you done the math? Right? Do we have a commercial real estate crash in the United States? That's on Broadway. That's probably the biggest street in downtown St. Louis. Granite, downtown St. Louis is not what I would exactly call a thriving, thriving urban environment. Nonetheless, okay, in 2018, that building sold for $19 million. It's a big office building. I know it. Today, it sold for $12 million. You're going to tell me, right? And we got a wave of these coming through. So let me point this out to you. Let's say I know you're rich, okay? I know, right? right? You're rich in a lot of ways, love. But let's make believe, let's make believe back in 2018 you had $19 million, okay? Or no, let's say you didn't have. Sorry, I screwed that up. You didn't have. But you had some money and you wanted to buy an office building. So you go to your bank and you say, you know what? There's a building in St. Louis I want to buy. It costs $19 million. But look, it's got all these tenants and it generates and I'm going to be able to make 10% profit per year and I'll be able to pay you back. And the bank says, sure, that's great. Okay. 
uh, gives you the $19 million, right? Loans it to you at maybe 3% interest. And you're the investor, you know, you're the investor, you're the real estate guru. Well, a bunch of people had put their money in that bank, right? In their checkings and savings account. That's where that $19 million came from that you took. You bought the building. Everything's hunky-dory. Now, five years later, that building's half empty. You can't even afford to make the payments on the loan that you took out in 2018, but it's five years later, and now you need to refinance the debt. So you go to the bank. You say, I need to refinance that debt, but I'm losing money on this deal the way it is. And the bank says, well, we got to actually raise your interest rate from 4% to 9% because rates have gone up. And you're like, you know what? I give up. I lose. Oh, here's the building, right? And the bank says, okay, you know, we loaned you $19 million. Let's see what it's worth. Oh, it's only worth $12 million. But you owe us $19 million. And you got all these people over here that had deposited their hard-earned money into the bank, right? that might come to the bank and say, we want our $19 million back, and the banks just aren't going to happen. And what we saw right there with that example from St. Louis is happening on a much larger scale throughout the country and will continue to happen as we move into the coming year and two years and three years. All the while, <laughs> maybe they can put solar panels all over that building. I don't know, right? But all the while, right, we've got this economy with the consumer that is dying on the vine. People are desperate, taking money out of their 401ks. Uh, trucking volumes have crashed. Guys, it's just a big, big mess. But let's be happy, okay? I, did, I haven't looked at the, at the spot price. I don't have time we're talking. But this morning, we had gold over $2,000. If it pulls back you know, whatever. But at this point, the more times that we go above, the more likely it is we're going to have that breakout. Are we going to see $2,100 gold by Christmas? Let's type it in there. As always, okay, I'm going to type yes. I'm going to say yes, 2100 Do you think it's possible? We've been talking about this for a while, okay? Remember, Remember, we are now, we are now within striking distance of this all-time high for gold. You know, silver reacts a little later, but it also, it may take, it's the bone, you know, you got to wait a little while for silver to, to catch up and have its move. But when it does, it actually moves at a much more drastic pace. Okay. Now, I got more good news for you. You want some more good news? We're sitting right now, okay, around $2,000 gold. Now, <laughs> bear in mind, we've accomplished this under the worst of circumstances, all right? It's, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Uh, it'd be like if you were a, 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 a marathon runner and you just went out and ran 26 miles to train for your marathon and you set a record for yourself, but you were running into a 10 mile an hour wind in your face. That's what gold has done. Guys, does this, does this make sense to you? I hope it does, right? Under the worst of circumstances, we have achieved greatness with the gold price. I'm sorry, but we have. Right? And when things do, you know, we don't need the wind to stop. We don't need the wind to, to be at our back. We just need the wind to stop blowing. It's like Rick Rule said about silver. We don't need silver to be loved. We just need for it not to be hated. Right? And when that happens, we are going to see. And then if we get a confluence of a couple other factors, right? Lower interest rates, UBS, one of the most prestigious financial institutions in the world based in Switzerland, Switzerland has said that they're expecting interest rates to get cut by 2.75% next year. What if we have $2,100 gold already and the Fed starts to cut rates and all the other people wake up, right? All those people that look at you like you're crazy right now because you've invested some of your hard-earned money into silver and gold. It could get very, very interesting. Now, we're going to get Fed minutes out this afternoon. Be prepared. 
just be prepared because you never know what these guys are going to pull off. They could probably change the minutes of the meeting here in the next hour if they're looking at the silver and gold market. Like, we need to tamp down silver and gold, right? Call the boys at the COMEX. Tell them we're going to adjust the minutes to the meeting. The road up will be bumpy, no doubt about it. But, but we've got to take stock of where we are right now, which is a really good place. Okay. Now, if you want to get your hands on some gold in the ground, check out First Mining Gold. They're another sponsor of this channel, of this video, www.firstmininggold.com. They have two of the largest development projects in Canada, Spring Pole in Ontario and Duke Park K in Quebec, both of which have over 5 million ounces of gold in the ground. And Coin Shop, Chris, I had a new smartwatch. Hold on. Uh-oh. Hold on. Coin Shop Chris sent me a text. Oh, shoot. Now it's messed up. I can't see what he said. Send it again, Coin Shop Chris. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot one of the most important parts of this in every live stream. Um, well, number one, we got a big giveaway on Black Friday. If you haven't registered, go to the link in this video, and there's it says register here for the give the giveaway. Oh yeah, we need 300 likes. Hey guys, I'll stay on here till we get to 300, and I'm gonna ring the bell with my nose, even though Susie told me not to. I will do it one more time. But giveaway, there's a link. In the description of this video, you click on it. It's a two-minute YouTube video where I show everything in the giveaway and tell you what you have to do. You have to leave a comment in the comment section of that video, and you'll be registered. We're giving away all kinds of stuff. 10-ounce bar, Jim M, donated a bunch of stuff. Please type eight. I'm going to do it right now. For the moderators, eight is great because the moderators are great. Susie, Jake, Annie, Jim M. Coin Shop Chris, who else is on here? Annie, I saw her earlier. If I forgot somebody, I pop. Look at all you guys, huh? All right, man. Hey, let's get to 300 thumbs up. Do you want me to do the no the bell with my nose? Okay. Now, if I ever lose a sponsor over this, I'm going to have to knock it out. But traditionally, when we get to our 300 thumbs up, I do the nose dive with the uh, and uh, and I, I did injure myself doing this like six months ago. <coughs> Type nose if you want the nose. <laughs> We're almost there, guys. Uh oh, eight more. Yeah, Susie. We almost got 300 thumbs up. Come on, guys, we can do it. Basement dwellers, right? That's what we are. We love our silver and gold. Yeah, we feel a little crazy from time to time. I got a great one-hour interview I did with Oren from the Silver Hermit. This guy is a guru on what's going on big picture. If you want to learn about what's going on with the money printing, the Fed, all that stuff, make sure you listen to what Oren has to say. Super nice guy. Uh, he's been writing about the economy, writing about all this for years, and he's just now started a YouTube channel. He's going to be big, okay? Hey, we got the 300 thumbs up. Are you ready? Nose. All right. Up. Oh, one, two, three. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for being here. It's a good day. Okay. Be good to yourself. Thank you, Susie. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. All right. But it's a big deal. You're important. All right. Be nice to yourself today. Do your best to be nice to other people. Right. Starts, starts with you. And um, we're going to make it. And I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.